Hey there, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining, uh, joining us today, the Chambersburg Chamber of Commerce, as well as Cumulus Media. My friend Keith Hanshaw here for a uh, presentation on how to recruit with radio and digital. Primarily, we're focusing on the digital aspect today, as so many of the chamber members that I've been talking to here recently are looking uh, for, for ways to hire. They either cannot, you know, get folks in, enough folks in the door to hire, or unfortunately they're not finding the correct folks that, that, that they want to hire. So uh, Keith with Cumulus Media, he's the digital media specialist there. He had just recently joined the Chamber of Commerce, and I actually have a prior career working with Cumulus Media right out of uh, right out of college. So Keith and I have a relationship, and it's funny that most of the most of this PowerPoint that you see here today, I think at some point in time I was actually uh, editing that, Keith. So um, <laughs> yeah. uh, I, ho I hope everybody enjoys what they what you're flipping through here today. Uh, but without further ado, um, just want to say thank you so much for being here. Um, and the, the floor is yours. Um, thank you so much, Keith. Thanks so much, Jordan. And thank you, everybody that uh, is joining us today. Um, I've been with Cumulus Media as a media consultant building radio and digital um, advertising and recruitment campaigns since 2012. Uh, but I actually started at Cumulus Media back in 1986. Uh, when I was a senior in high school, I interned at Wink 104. And that's kind of where my interest uh, started with, with radio to begin with. Um, today, we're going to talk about how to recruit with radio and digital. And like Jordan said, we're going to focus more on the digital side. I'm going to cover the radio because I believe radio is important to have in your marketing or your recruitment mix. But just geographically, where our stations are specifically, unless you're trying to target people from Shippensburg or to the east, it, it's not going to make sense to do radio on any of our stations because that's that's where we're targeting. If you want to target um, York, Gettysburg, um, Hanover, Harrisburg, Carlisle, somewhere like that, um, we can do that. But we're going to focus this conversation specifically uh, on digital, and I'll just kind of touch the the radio points. And um, when I'm discussing that, think about your area and a radio station that would make sense for your area. Because again, I think having multiple platforms when you're doing recruitment or marketing. Um, is going to help you overall. So as we start, let's look at the four keys of successful advertising. It doesn't matter what type of advertising you're doing. There are four keys that are going to determine if it's successful or not. Reach. Are you reaching enough for the right people? Um, you have to get your message out to a lot of people and you want to let a lot of people know that you're hiring, right? So it takes, it's, it's a numbers game. You want to get it, your message in front of as many people as possible. And you can target based on the, the station from a radio standpoint of where that station covers, what the station's demographic is, uh, and who their listener base is. Number two, frequency. You want to reach people on a frequent basis. You want to constantly remind them and stay top of mind that you're hiring. Um, if you think about it, when you get up in the morning until the time you go to bed, we're bombarded by a ton of ads, whether it's um, billboards, TV, radio, digital, online, magazines. Think of all the different ads you see. Unless you see something that catches your attention at that time, you tend to glaze over it because it's not something that's relevant. So there's a curve of forgetfulness and why we want to stay and keep reminding people. And they say sleep's the great eraser. You know, you may see something new today, but when you go to sleep tonight, if it's not something that was important to you, your mind kind of erases the chalkboard and you start all over the next day. So again, stay in front of them frequently. Consistency. You want to consistently stay in front of the people that you're trying to target because they're always in a different job hunting um, mood or attitude. You know, you may contact somebody and put your job offer in front of them one month and they're not interested in even looking at another job because things are going great at work, but catch them at the right time a month later. And, you know, maybe, maybe they're, boss wrote them up or, or the cut hours or something happened. Um, you want to constantly be advertising from a long-term basis to constantly stay in front of people. And the message, this is probably the most important one in my opinion, because think about it. If your message is, hey, we have a new warehouse, we're hiring 100 people, we're hiring forklift operators, and uh, anybody that acts now that signs on, we're going to give them a $25 sign on bonus and we'll bump your pay up to $5 and 25 cents an hour after 90 days. Well, that's a terrible message. And it doesn't matter how much reach you have. It doesn't matter how many times you put your message in front of them. 
it doesn't matter month after month how long you're advertising. If your message is unappealing, nobody's going to respond to it. It's just, you need to have a good message. So I want you to keep that in mind when you're thinking about your job offers that you're presenting out there. It's a very competitive world right now for recruiting and everybody's fighting for the same people. So rather than targeting people that are on job boards searching for jobs because they don't have a job, we want to target people where they're working. You have a lot of local advertising options to consider when you're considering your recruitment or marketing. You have outdoor or billboard, broadcast TV, cable TV, newspaper, digital direct mail, and radio. But with all of these different media options, how do you decide what's really going to work best for your specific recruitment needs, right? Well, today we're going to talk about finding and targeting new employees by creating a campaign that's really customized around what your needs are. Um, a business that's trying to hire 10 people has totally different needs than a business that's hiring 100 people or that is constantly hiring month after month. So we can create a campaign that uses either radio or digital or a combination of both. But again, for today, we're going to specifically talk about the digital side and how we can use digital display advertising, uh, Facebook, responsive display, or landing pages to help promote your jobs. So if you're in our area, again, these are just the stations that I represent, but if you're in our area, um, think about this for the stations that are in your area where you have people that are listening. You want to pick a station and put your recruitment ads on the station that has the right demographic for what you're hiring for. If you're trying to hire forklift operators, Wink 104 is absolutely the wrong station to advertise on because Wink 104 is targeting women 25 to 54. If you want to target RNs or LPNs or um, nursing assistants or something like that, you're going to find somebody like that more in Wink 104. Hot 1067 is more of the 20 and 30 year old listeners. And that's where you're going to find the, you know, the lower entry rate wages and the warehouse work people more so than you're going to find on Wink 104. Um, CBS Sports Radio, it's affluent sports listeners that listen to that, but a lot of those are salespeople or business owners uh, that are listening to sports talk throughout the day. So whatever station you have in your area, if you're going to add radio to your media mix, you really want to pick a station that's going to target the ideal person that you're trying to hire. Any radio questions, if you have questions about radio, feel free to message me or ask me later. We're going to talk more about uh, the digital, but you may ask, why should we use radio for recruitment? Well, radio is reaching the passive job seeker. These are the people that are already doing the job that you need them to do, and they're happy with, with where they are, but you know, maybe if they had a better opportunity, they'd consider changing. So a recent survey was done, and it showed that two-thirds of current employees that were working would consider making a change if a better opportunity were presented itself. So radio is reaching them um, you know, when they get up in the morning, when they're getting ready for work, when they're driving to work for the people that still drive to work. Um, people listen while they're at work, they listen on the way home. And with more and more people working from home, you have more people listening on devices like Alexa or Google Home and things like that at home. So radio's reach is just expanded. Um, radio also sends a positive message about your business and it brands your, your organization as an employer of choice. So a couple years ago, they did a study of 3,200 different advertising campaigns over a six year period. And what they found out was that the most successful advertising campaigns all shared in eight unique characteristics. And if you look here, the very first one, reach your potential customer. Well, for your marketing and your recruitment to be effective, you have to reach potential employees. And as you can see, looking across, every single media option reaches customers or employees in one way or the other, right? Outdoor, they reach it because you drive by and see it. Broadcast, cable TV, um, you see it on TV. Newspaper, you read it if you still find a newspaper. Um, digital, something online, direct mail, you're getting it right in the mail, or they hear it on the radio. As you look down through the eight characteristics, every different media option has merit in some of the categories. But radio is the only media that checks off all the boxes and meets all the eight, all eight requirements that deliver the best performing advertising. And that's why radio consistently delivers the highest return on investment of any local media option. It's a 10 to one return or three to four times higher than any local media option. And why I strongly recommend that radio should be part of your marketing mix or your recruitment mix. 
radio's everywhere today. It's in more places. People listen to it on uh, more devices and in more ways than they've ever done in the history of advertising. And by adding a second platform like digital, this is that same um, uh, campaign that I was just talking about, and there's the statistics at the bottom. 71% of those 3,200 advertising campaigns that they researched were on multiple platforms, meaning they didn't just do um, online, they didn't just do TV, they didn't just do billboard, they did radio and digital and billboard, or they did radio and online and print or whatever made sense for them. Um, but as you see, with each incremental platform that you add to whatever your marketing or your recruitment is, you're increasing your incremental ROI by adding that additional platform. The reason we recommend digital is if you look here back on this slide, digital is the second highest uh, ROI producing media option out there. So when you pair radio with digital, you're really maximizing your recruitment budget or your hiring budget or your marketing budget to hit the most people at the most cost effective way possible. So when we talk about digital products, again, there's a different digital product depending on what you're looking to do. And when, when people ask, um, uh, or I say, hey, uh, are you doing digital? And they say, oh, well, we're already doing digital ourselves. I said, oh, okay, well, can you explain that to me a little bit? Tell me a little bit about what you're doing. And it ends up that, oh, well, we have a Facebook page and we post on Facebook. Well, Facebook is just one small sliver, sliver of the pie when it comes to digital. We're going to focus specifically for recruitment on display advertising. So the marketing goals funnel, if you look on the left, is kind of broken up into four different areas that we're targeting. Are we targeting people for awareness? Like, hey, we're hiring. You know, it's just general awareness. Hey, we're hiring. Or consideration. Are you doing, hey, we're hiring. Apply now. Or engagement. Are you trying to get people to come to your website and complete a form to submit an application? Um, all the way down to conversion, which is your most uh, expensive from a digital standpoint. If you look on the right, the options at the top are your most cost effective. And as you go down the funnel, it gets more expensive. Google AdWords is one of the most expensive things, in my opinion, that you can do because they have a cost per click method. Um, now, it's great for conversion and it gets results, but you're going to pay for that. And I'll explain that uh, coming up here in a slide or two. So, we talk about radio, why radio, why digital? Digital is reaching the active job seeker. It's reaching the people that are actively searching online for jobs on job boards or visiting websites that are related to fields or positions similar to what you're hiring for. It targets the job seeker by the position that they're searching for, and it allows us to um, reach them and market to them without even having to post on a job board. So we're gonna talk specifically about a blended campaign tactic that we use for recruitment. And this is really a turnkey solution. The only thing that really changes is turning the volume up or down with how many impressions you're serving per month. Um, we use four main tactics. We use keyword search, we use contextual search, we use retargeting, and we use mobile geofencing tactics to target our ideal person. And I'll break that down a little further. Keyword search retargeting. If you uh, we can display your job offers to people who have performed searches for jobs that you're hiring for in your industry. So say somebody's on Indeed and they're searching for a forklift operator near me. You don't have to have an, a job posted on Indeed. You don't have to sponsor a listing on Indeed. If they're searching on Indeed or ZipRecruiter or they're searching on any internet website, we can capture that data as somebody that's looking for that information and then we can start delivering ads for your job offer to those people. Three things I would like to point out. One, we can target and reach people that are searching the job boards without posting and paying to sponsor a listing. Two, when you post on a job board, you're relying on your applicants to search and find you on that specific site. If you put a job on Indeed, you're targeting people that go to Indeed looking for jobs. Um, number three, we can target the applicant that you're looking for based on what, what the job description is or the geography. And then we follow them and we put your job offer in front of them through a display ad on whatever site that they're visiting. Doesn't matter what website they're on or what app they're using on their phone. If there's an open ad spot that we can fill and take, we're putting your ad in front of them so it looks natural to them. It's not like it's a pop-up on, the, on their phone that's annoying them or they're not like, oh, why does this company keep sending me? It's not like that. These are all natural impressions as they're scrolling through whatever website they're visiting. Um, if you look on your newsfeed and scroll through, you'll see different areas where you, you know, they're ads. 
that's where we would put your job offer for that specific target. Contextual targeted ads are for people that are maybe doing research about a, a specific job or they're showing habits of somebody that's maybe looking for a job. Maybe they're on the website researching salary ranges for forklift operators. That would be a contextual target advertising and we can capture those people also and again begin serving your ad to them up to four times a day for the next 30 days. Retargeting ads. If you have access to your corporate website or you, have, you do your own website and you can put a snippet of code in your header, we can put a, a pixel on there that will track all of the traffic that comes through your website. Anybody that goes to your careers page and visits it, when they leave, we can start targeting them now and continue to put your job offers in front of those people to remind them that you're still hiring. It's a way to stay relevant and keep reminding the people that have already been to your website, hey, come back, we're still hiring, we wanna see you. And my favorite out of every tactic that we do is mobile geofencing. Imagine being able to take a Google satellite map and to draw an invisible fence around any real world location down to the size of a parking space. Imagine geofencing competitive, or for, we'll use warehouse workers for an example, because there's a million warehouses around us. Say you're hiring 100 warehouse positions and you're hiring all the same positions that everybody in every other warehouse is doing. Well, there's probably not a ton of people out there searching for those jobs because there's a ton of people already doing it. So your best bet is to fish where the fish are or to target those other warehouses and draw geofences around their buildings. Once we have a geofence and we identify a target area, we try to capture as many phone IDs that we can get in that area. A phone ID is like a fingerprint. Every single one is different. So any phone that is inside that zone when we're capturing them gets added to a database. Now we have a database of people that we know work inside a target area that are prime people that may be interested in coming to work for you if you have a better offer, better pay, better hours, better benefits, whatever. Some compelling reason to leave you have a good opportunity to pull these employees away and stay in front of them. So we capture people in a geofence and then we serve impressions on their smartphones and they don't have to click on it. They see the ad. If they eventually walk into your hiring location, this is the hiring location um, uh, that I threw in there for manpower. But if somebody sees this banner ad and eventually walks into manpower's office, we have a geofence around their office, but we call that a conversion zone. So it's a way for us to capture anybody that comes in the conversion zone, scrub it against the list of all the geofences that we've been serving ads to, and identify, did we serve an ad to this person? Yes or no. If not, it's irrelevant. If it is, it's counted as a weighted action. It's a way for you to hold our feet to the fire and track real world results of people that were identified and served your ad that physically walked into your location. Now, I can't guarantee you that you hired the person, but I can tell you that they walked into your location or if you're in a strip mall, there's a chance that maybe they came to a business beside yours, but you may have a, a, a rogue one or two like that, but pretty accurate from tracking people that we target and showing you where they, sh where they come in. Another layer that you can do is Facebook. With Facebook, we can find unique profiles specific to your ideal demographics. Again, based on your geography or your interest or the jobs that you're looking for. We can choose niche categories and we can create a custom Facebook ad with calls to action that are tailored to whatever the goal of your campaign is, whether it's getting them to submit an application or um, like your web page or visit your website, whatever it is, we can custom tailor that. Now, any ads that you do on Facebook, Facebook has to approve. And Facebook uh, recently became a lot more stringent with targeting. So you used to be able to go in and say, I'm gonna target men 18 to 24. Well, now you can't do that. You, can, you can't specify by gender because um, I guess it's sexist if you're picking specifically, I want to look just for men or just for women. So you can pick um, people and you can do ranges 18 to 34 or 25 to 54. But other than that, you're not going to get real refined with Facebook targeting just because of the, the restrictions. The other option is responsive display. Um, we call it responsive display if you only do it one month. We call it responsive guaranteed display if we're running a long-term campaign because we guarantee click-through rates and, and responses for it, but we strongly encourage it to be a long-term program that you're using, not something that you're just running for a single month. Um, if you're looking to just throw money at something uh, for a one week or a one month period and expect huge results, you're just setting yourself up for, for disappointment. Um, you need to be um, 
realistic with the, you know, the number of positions that you're hiring, what the competition is, who you're targeting, um, that all factors into how you build your campaign. But with responsive display, the ads are created on the fly. So it allows Google um, to fit them in more ad location sizes when we're targeting people that are searching specifically on the Google network. So we're gonna look at some real world examples here. This is a campaign that I uh, was running for Eastern Iowa. And these are just a couple of the screen grabs of some of the geofence locations that we targeted. Here's the actual report. It's from uh, the month of August of 2019 is when I pulled this report from. And down here, for this campaign, we use three different techniques. We use contextual, we use geofencing, and we use search targeting. Over here on the right, for this campaign, this campaign ran just under 75,000 impressions uh, during this month. Out of the 75,000 impressions that were served to people that we targeted through either search, geofencing, or contextual search, 70, uh, I'm sorry, 87 people clicked on the banners and went to the uh, landing page where the job offers were for Eastern Iowa. That gives them a click-through rate of 0.12. Now you may look at that and think that's a low click-through rate, but the national average for display, digital display click-through rates is 0.05. So this campaign is running a little better than twice the national average. There were 65 weighted actions. 65 weighted actions for this, I believe, um, is form completions, on their website and the geofence weighted actions there were 37. That means 37 people that were in the locations that we were targeting physically walked in either Eastern Iowa location or the hiring facility where they were hiring. Um, here's the actual geofence locations. I highlighted a couple of them. If you look down through there, the first one is a staffing company that they were targeting. And if you look over to the right, to the staffing company alone within the walls of that building, um, and I'm assuming these are people that have gone in there for interviews for other positions, was offering, but we served 1,070 impressions this month to these people. Three people clicked, which was a 0.28 click through, which that's five times the national average, and 13 people from staffing walked in for the positions that they were hiring for uh, general laborers or forklift operators. Manufacturing, four people clicked through, six people walked in. Staffing, another staffing company, there's 10 people that walked in. Here's another uh, one of my national accounts. I have accounts that I've been working with um, nationally that have been doing digital recruitment campaigns with me since early 2012. And they run the same campaign every month ongoing. If they have a, a surge where they need to hire more people, they increase the impressions for that month and put more impressions to it. As your positions change, it's easy to change your creative and change the focus um, of your campaign. But traffic campaign uh, for their message is great, it pays more than their competitors. So their job offer is targeting people that work and all the other flagger companies and basically saying, hey, do you want more money for the job that you're doing now? Click here or apply here. We serve 100,000 impressions a month. In September of 2020, 150 people clicked through, three times the national average, and 20 people physically walked in to the location. Out of the three, um, or the 20 people that walked in, we can break down the conversions and show you exactly where they went. Um, we target actually five different areas. for Lemoyne, Pennsylvania, King of Prussia, Stevens, PA, New Columbia, PA, and a city in Virginia. Virginia's not showing up in here because this month, um, it was either before we added Virginia or Virginia just didn't have any conversions this specific month. But you can see 13 of the weighted actions walked into the Lemoyne location. Five of them went to King of Prussia, one went to the Stevens PA, and the other one went to New Columbia PA. Now here's something you probably don't know. Um, in addition to being a media consultant with Cumulus Media, I'm also the manager of the Harrisburg Comedy Zone. So total side note, if you wanna take your employees and do something fun, give me a call. I manage the place. I'll give you a really good deal on tickets. <laughs> um, one of the other things I do, I'm one of the owners of a veteran owned company. We're just a small two person company, but we do custom coins for military units, police departments, businesses, things like that. I'm not only talking and recommending digital as a means of marketing, I use this personally myself. So, Graywater Ops, 
digital ad campaign and a responsive display campaign. My digital ad campaign, if you look, I had about 16, almost just over 16,000 impressions. And this is my most recent um, report from December. So 16,000 impressions served. I had 107 people click through my website, but look at that click through rate, 0.65. Again, the national average is 0.05. Now weighted actions on my is um, a form completion on my website because I don't have the type of business where people walk in. I don't have a retail location. I work out of my home. I do all the coin designs from here. I ship everything from here. I do customer service from here. Um, but I have a 0.65 click through rate. That's huge. And I'll show you why in a second. If you look down here at the bottom, I'm using three different techniques for my display campaign. I'm using geofencing, I'm using search, and I'm using website retargeting. And as you look across there, look at my geofencing stats. 5,478 impressions served, 34 clicks with a 0.62 click through rate. And here's why that's so high. I geofence one location. So my biggest customer is military units or military commanders that want to have coins made that say presented by the commander. Good job. Basically it's a, it's a, an award that they give out to their troops to show recognition or appreciation for whatever they're awarding the coin for. Every Air Force officer that becomes a squadron commander goes to Maxwell Air Force Base in Georgia here, I mean in Alabama. Um, they all stay at this specific hotel on base. So I geofence that hotel in the parking lot where all those commanders stay and I start serving them ads for my challenge coins. And that's why my click-through rate is so high. I'm targeting very niche people um, and I'm reaching the right audience. The other thing that I do is target uh, with responsive display. Here's a coin that I just finished for Letter County Army demo, or Depot. This is uh, the Cumberland Valley Business Park coin that we did. Um, but my responsive display guarantee in December delivered almost 140,000 impressions. I had 3,500 individual unique new visitors to my website in December as a result of my responsive display guarantee. My click-through rate is a 2.53. Again, um, for display advertising, it's a 0 0.05. For responsive guarantee, we guarantee a 0 0.3, uh, which is still about what, six times of the national average of display advertising, but my campaign's performing well above that because again, I'm targeting a niche audience. On the left here in the bottom, if you see these keywords down here, this is from a program that I use to evaluate keywords, but it shows you the top keywords related to challenge coins, what the volume of search is per month. There's 11,600 people searching custom challenge coins every month. KD stands for um, keyword difficulty, meaning how hard is it to get your ad or get people to see your ad on Google when you're doing a cost per click if you're paying uh, based on the click. So right now, when I pulled this, the average cost per click when somebody clicked on the phrase custom challenge coins was $9. And as a small veteran owned business, I don't have $9 to afford to spend every time somebody clicks on the button. So instead of using Google AdWords, I use responsive guarantee display and I can target the same people searching Google AdWords um, and get and then deliver my ad through the response display ads and still get my message across to those people. So that's kind of how we use uh, digital in a nutshell. If you would like to schedule a time to talk about your specific um, needs for your company and talk about your hiring goals and what you're looking to do, I would be more than happy to schedule time to review. Like I said, you know, I can throw rates out there and tell you this is this much and this is that much, but that's not really going to help you or do you any good. The best thing I can do is to sit down with you for maybe 20 minutes, figure out how many you're trying to hire, what you've done, what you're trying to do, what your monthly recruitment budget is and what we can do for that budget. Um, any questions? Keith, I do have one question. You can hear me, correct? I can. All right, great. We have a question. Um, any tips specifically for trying to hire for entry level jobs, especially if we are hoping to hire a more diverse person? Um, well, geofencing, I would Think of ideas that you could target specifically. Where are there people that are doing the job that you need them to do? 
um, that you could pull from that. And I'm not talking people again that are searching job boards because they don't have a job. I'm talking about finding people that are already doing the job that you need to do target and identify those people. You can geofence those buildings and put your message in front of them that way. Um, Facebook, if you have a Facebook page, if you're doing regular Facebook posts and you have 10,000 followers on your page, um, when you post something, it doesn't go to 10,000 followers. It goes to like five followers. And if those five followers react or interact with it by liking it or leaving a comment or sharing or interacting with it some way, then more people see it. And the way the algorithm works, the more people that interact and the more interesting your article that you post is, the more people will want to see it. So the more people they show it to. So outside of paying to sponsor a post or to boost post, um, you're, you're just, you're, you're paying for the traffic, kind of like you're doing with Google AdWords um, when you're, when you're paying for traffic on Facebook. But geofencing would be, would be my best idea. And again, come up with an offer that's better than, than what somebody else is, is offering. It, it's going to be hard to pull entry level um, salary jobs if you're trying to, you know, I mean, and $15 is kind of the low end of warehouse jobs right now. If you look around, um, anybody without any experience should be able to go find a job and get hired at a warehouse and start making minimum $15. Yet I still see advertisers advertise them, 1350 an hour or 14 no something under that something less and it's really important to you know again put your best foot forward when you're trying to to court new people and get them to to come to you because if your offer is not better they really have no reason to to leave the the comfort of where they are well, Keith, I might have some bias since I like you, but you did an excellent job. I think, uh, you know, you really did a great job of, uh, you know, making, making our audience aware of all the, you know, different outlets out there from a digital, you know, aspect and as well as a radio aspect. But no, honestly, great job and uh, your, all your information's here and whatnot. So I implore anybody on this phone call today, if they want to get some more information from you, um, please, you know, reach out there by phone, uh, mobile, or obviously emails listed there. So um, this will be posted on our Facebook page and everything. So if you uh, want to go back and, and pull some information that uh, from earlier on in the presentation, you'll be able to do so when uh, we post this on our Facebook page. So uh, Keith, thanks again. Great job. Thanks so much, Jordan. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Right, everyone. Yeah, everyone, thanks for being here. And um, we'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.